17 p.m. and the meeting is now reconvened. Will have roll call. Mayor Oker. Here. Councilman Dickinson. Here. Councilwoman Gavin. Here. Councilman Hug. Here. Councilman Morris. Here. Councilman Mudrin. Here. Councilwoman Coleman. Here. Councilwoman Reardon. Here. Councilman Turkus Anson. Next is council committee reports. First is the CTIS committee report. Yes, Your Honor, uh, the CTIS committee met on uh, October the 22nd. The members are myself, Mike Turk, and our chairperson, uh, Sherry Reardon. We met with uh, Dave Brown, staff, Amanda, and Chris. And what that meeting incurred was an up date on some of the, the projects that we have out there. The flock case study, we looked at that. He brought us up to speed with that. That is with our um, uses of Axion flock and advent and videotech. And this is all security purposes. The Axion uh, project update, uh, we did hear from Amanda that our Year end complete on the uh, police cameras in the in the cars. That project is uh, completed, at least completed by end of year. Um, it's there. We also had the Heartland uh, project update uh, concerning our our uh, Microsoft 365 water analysis. Uh, the CTIS involvement with the uh, water loss. Uh, they gave us an update on that and a projected uh, target uh, for an, another update. Uh, G, uh, GIS, uh, and that is uh, that is not in the cloud now. And that's a, a possible project that they're going to be putting that uh, into the cloud. And ViewWorks, uh, which is an asset management uh, uh, tool. They gave us an update on that with uh, Public Works, the Police Department, the Fire Department. So it will be available to, to a lot of our um, departments uh, to compile data. And um, I believe that was it. Mr. Turk is not here tonight, so if I forgot anything, David, <laughs> David in the room, if I, did I forget anything? Okay. <laughs> full, full disclosure, it made it sound like I was at the meeting, but I wasn't there. Yeah, right. Betty so graciously did it for me today. So thank you. <laughs> okay. Other than that, Yana, that's our report. Thank you. Economic Development Committee report. <clears throat> the Economic Development Committee met on the 27th of October here at City Hall at 5 o'clock in the evening. Um, we had two items, two uh, economic development packages that we've been working on and uh, finalizing approval. And I'm going to have Derek give a brief summary of both the projects. He did a great job in summarizing it. Derek? <clears throat> well, we move forward. Yeah, if we, yeah come back. Okay, let's, yeah. hey, let's go, move on to Public Service Committee report, and then we can um, go back to economic development afterwards. Public Service oh, Committee. Yes, Public Service Committee meet, uh, Committee met tonight this evening, at uh, or late this afternoon, at uh, four fifteen. Um, there was a routine agenda. What we did go over was. Uh, let's see here. There we go. Uh, we only had two contracts that we considered. Um, like I say, they were pretty routine. Uh, one has to do with uh, phase one engineering services for the Theodore Street over the Rock Run Creek bridge improvement. And the other one was repair of a well pump, pump 29D. Um, we had several pay estimates, change orders, and final payments. We did vet each one individually and uh, found them all to be in, in order for their payments and uh, change orders and their final payments. Um, we had uh, three ordinance and resolutions, which were predominantly housekeeping. Uh, one, freeing up MFT money for the uh, bridge over the Rock Run Creek 
um, on Theodore, that will be 80, that amount will be 80% rebated or refunded to the city by the state of Illinois. We pay for it up front. So we had to approve that payment of 185,000 for phase one. We will give that money back at, at completion, 80% of it from the state. Um, other than that, there was really nothing. Like I said, it was a pretty short and routine uh, agenda. We went through the entire agenda. All items were discussed and voted on, and all items unanimously were moved forward and are on the council agenda tonight for consideration with full uh, committee approval, uh, unanimous co committee approval. Um, Betty, Terry, did I miss anything? No, I think we, you covered and, it all away. No, sir. Thank you. Then that would be the end of the Public Service Committee report. Thank you. Moving back to Economic Development Committee report, I believe Derek Conley is here. Good evening, uh, Mayor and Council. Uh, so the Economic Development Committee met October 27th, uh, which was last Tuesday. We had three items for consideration. Two of those are uh, for uh, proposal tonight. Uh, the first one is a development agreement with John Bay's or with uh, Bay's Premier Building LLC. Of course, the uh, president of this is John Bays. He's one of our local uh, investors here in Joliet, in the downtown especially. Uh, this is for the property at 51 West Jackson Street uh, in our downtown. It's also known as the Premier, Bu Premier Building. Uh, Bays purchased this building in July 2019. It's approximately 40,000 square feet. Uh, it's been empty for a long time. Uh, the city of Joliet has showed this building to a lot of developers over the years. No one has ever been interested in it because of the condition of the building. Uh, when, Jay's, uh, when John Bays bought it, uh, there was a lot of uh, problems with the building. In order to get a developer into the building or any tenant into the building, uh, John had to uh, put together a lot of plans and put a lot of money into the building. To date, he's put about uh, $1.3 million into the building. Um, just this past month, well, the first tenant did move into the building. Consumer Financial Services Corporation. Uh, they signed a 15-year lease. They have about eight employees, and they have about uh, 30 to 60 customers per day. Uh, this is in our downtown TIF district, uh, so he's eligible for a TIF rebate. Uh, the total investment in this property would be about $3 million when it's all said and done. Uh, he's, of course, already put in about $1.3 million, uh, but part of it is still vacant, so there's still money to be put into it. Uh, so one of the problems with this building is that it has a high TIF base. Um, the TIF base is about $46,000, and the current property bill is about $23,000. Uh, so in other words, the city can only capture and rebate anything over $46,000. The estimated property tax bill would be about $70,000. Uh, so what we are proposing is 100% TIF rebate. Uh, this would total about uh, $581,000 over the 19-year period, because there's 19 years left on the TIF. Uh, this would be a 19%, uh, this would total about 19% of the total project cost. Uh, one other thing I should note about this is that uh, this is actually, the, the current property taxes are so low and the TIF base is so high that there's actually going to be a portion that's going to go back to the, the other uh, taxing bodies uh, throughout um, throughout the life of the agreement. So $46,000 is now going to be dispersed to all the taxing bodies. And at the total, that would be about $875,000. So this is a TIF agreement, but it's actually going to benefit all the taxing bodies. Uh, so with that, I can take any questions or move on to the next item. Uh, the next one would be an economic incentive agreement with Darcy Motors. Of course, the president of this uh, company would be Terry Darcy, uh, who owns a number of car dealerships in Joliet including the Hyundai dealership, which is on Jefferson Street. And this is a relocation of that to uh, 2020 Essington Road. This would be just south of the uh, GMC Buick, uh, which is currently located there. It's a $12 million investment. This is relocation, but it does come with uh, more jobs because this is a bigger facility. Uh, it would, at full capacity, it'd be about 76,000 or 76 uh, employees by year five. Uh, the property taxes would be estimated to be around, I've got 65,000 to 95,000, and probably end up around 80, 85,000. Uh, and this is a sales tax rebate. Uh, it would start at 70% for the first five years, and then it would be 60% uh, from years five to, I'm sorry, from years six to 10, 
and in the last five years would be at 50 percent uh, the maximum length would be 15 years or three or it'd be 3.75 million uh, in, in maximum rebate, uh, whichever came first. Uh, so by my calculations, and these are my numbers, uh, this would still generate the city about $2.5 million with the rest of it, the 3.7 going to uh, back to the developer. Uh, I should note that they have some op more optimistic numbers. Uh, that they put forward, which would be great. I hope those numbers are right because it'd be more sales tax revenue for the city of Joliet. Uh, the project would start construction in March of 2021 and finish in spring 2022. Uh, and I should also note that this is very similar to the Carmax agreement, uh, which passed a year and a half ago. Uh, it's essentially the same structure uh, and that project is still underway. That hasn't been delayed by COVID. It was always planning on going forward in year 2021. And we did have one other item that is not on the agenda tonight. It was uh, the review of the pilot program, which I know that we discussed payment in lieu of taxes for truck parking and truck terminal facilities. Uh, both of those are going over to um, the land use committee uh, at the next meeting for its review, and then it will go to council. And I just got two more comments. Thank you, Derek. Um, what Derek was referring to, for those that don't follow it, on the uh, TIF agreement with the uh, base premier building is because of a weird situation with the bank. Um, by law, the, the TIF base, TIF base was about 46,000. The bank, even though it was vacant for how many years, Derek? A lot. It was a lot of years. They never, believe it or not, the bank never uh, petitioned the township or the county to lower the taxes. So that's the tax we have to use. So, you know, Mr. Bay is taking a bigger risk, really, when you think about it, because when he bought it, then the taxes were reassessed based on the, the you know the purchase price. So the taxes are much lower. So he's got to put enough money as he's doing to get it back to the forty-six thousand, and then anything above that he can get out of the TIF. So um, just to make that clear. And as far as the Darcy Motors, it is the same deal that we had. It's a very competitive uh, industry with car dealerships. You, you, really, as a city, you want to if you want to be taken seriously, you need to have them. And I'll say that Darcy Motors, as well as uh, um, Hawk, when they went out there, people don't understand, this aren't, these aren't done on whims by these car dealership owners. They are under contract with a franchise, be it uh, Hyundai in this case, be it Volkswagen. And the terms of that franchise are not set by the local dealer. They're set by the car manufacturer. And they change those over the years and say, we want you to move in this, you know, further west in this area. We want a large, we, we, we don't like three acres anymore, we, we want five acres. You do what they want, or you lose the franchise. It's, it's, and we all remember back during the Great Collapse how many dealerships GM took away from a lot of, of dealers. So this isn't a win. Sometimes you hear people say, well, if they just want to move. No, this is what they have to do. And we certainly want to keep our dealerships in the town. And I'll tell you what. The economic incentives we've come up with basically for Hawk now to attract in CarMax and for Darcy Motors is not as generous as some other communities that give away the entire farm. Um, I'm not going to name one to the north of us that did that recently and took one of our dealerships. These dealers <coughs> could get a better deal in a different community. They're just looking for something that will make sense on the development and be fair to everybody including the city. And I wanted to point that out. And all three are basically the same structure. And it's a structure we came up with a few years back for Hawk, and it's worked well, as well with Darcy, as well as with the, the, the newcomers. That's all I wanted to clarify. Do you got anything else, Derek? I told you, he had a much better summary than me this, this time. Thanks, Derek. I have no other reports. Under consent agenda, approval of the minutes. It's recommended the minutes of the pre-council meeting held on October 19, 2020, and the minutes of the Council meeting held on October 20th, 2020, stand approved as recorded. The 2021 Joliet City Council meeting schedule, it's recommended this schedule be approved. Position vacancies, it's recommended that, which is Council Memo 567-20, it's recommended the city manager be authorized to fill one public safety clerk one position, one janitor position, and any subsequent vacancies which may occur. Is there a motion to approve said consent agenda items? I'll move. Second. Been motioned and seconded to approve. Councilwoman Coleman? Aye. Councilwoman Reardon? Aye. Councilman Dickinson? Aye. 
Councilwoman Gavin. Aye. Councilman Hugg. Aye. Councilman Morris. Aye. Councilman Mudrin. Aye. Motion carried. Next is Council Memo 568-20, payment of $22,900 in audit fees for the Will County Metropolitan and Auditorium Authority. It's recommended this item be approved. So moved. Second. It's been motioned and seconded to approve. Uh, question, Mayor. Yes. Jim, if I understand this correctly, because of our unique relationship with Rialto Theater, um, they must do this year-end audit, not just for themselves, but it can impact our financials and our year-end audit. Am I correct? That's correct. They are a subunit of the city, and so our auditors require their audit. Otherwise, our audit is, will be incomplete. That's correct. And that's not going to be a good thing. No. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. It was motion and seconded to approve. Councilwoman Reardon? Aye. Councilman Dickinson? Aye. Councilwoman Gavin? Aye. Councilman Hug? Aye. Councilman Morris? Aye. Councilman Mudrin? Aye. Councilwoman Quillman? Aye. Motion carried. <clears throat> Moving on under ordinances. Council Memo 570-20, ordinances associated with Darcy Estate Subdivision. This includes an ordinance approving the revised preliminary plan of Darcy Estate Subdivision. Ordinances approving the final plat and recording plat of Darcy Estates Unit 2 subdivision. An ordinance approving the reclassification of 16.3 acres at 2020 and 2022 Essington Road from R2 single family residential and R4 low density multifamily residential to B3 general business zoning. An ordinance approving the vacation of public utility, drainage and ingress, egress easement and stormwater detention easement and an ordinance approving a special use permit for car dealerships located at 2020 and 2022 Essington Road. It's recommended said ordinances be adopted. Second. It was motioned and seconded to approve. Councilman Dickinson. Aye. Councilwoman Gavin. Aye. Councilman Hug. Aye. Councilman Morris. Aye. Councilman Mudrin. Aye. Councilwoman Coleman? Aye. Councilwoman Rudin? Aye. Motion carried. Next is Council Memo 571-20, an ordinance declaring certain properties as public nuisances. It's recommended that ordinance be adopted. So moved. Second. It's been motion and seconded to approve. Councilwoman Gavin? Councilman Hug? Aye. Councilman Morris? Aye. Councilman Mudrin? Aye. Councilwoman Coleman? Aye. Councilwoman Rudin? Aye. Councilman Dickinson? Aye. Motion carried. Council Memo 572-20 is an ordinance approving a special use permit to allow 20 dwelling units in an existing mixed use building located at 110, 116 North Chicago Street. It's recommended said ordinance be adopted. So moved. Second. Been motioned and seconded to approve. Councilman Hogg. Aye. Councilman Morris. Aye. Councilman Mudrin. Aye. Councilwoman Coleman. Aye. Councilwoman Reardon. Aye. Councilman Dickinson. Aye. Councilwoman Gavin. Aye. Motion carried. Under resolutions. Council Memo 573-20 is a resolution entering into a memorandum of understanding with Colin and Joliet LLC. Mayor? Yes. Uh, if I can just give a little background again on this uh, issue. As you know, at the last council meeting, uh, you adopted the TIF eligibility for the uh, Cullen and Rock Run uh, development proposal. Uh, this requires us to uh, adopt three ordinances uh, which would establish a TIF area uh, where where we could uh, have some money to uh, invest and reimburse the city on any bond issues for uh, capital improvements and infrastructure in the area to make the development move forward. Uh, one of the things the city was interested in was to uh, gain an extra year on the tax roll because 
uh, the development has two or three years of, of zero increase in property value while the infrastructure is being built. So by waiting until our first meeting in January, uh, it'll give us an extra construction season, so to speak, uh, and, and hopefully minimize the number of, of years that we have zero increased income that would go into the TIF that would pay off the bonds. So what you have before you tonight is a, a resolution uh, basically outlining that uh, you will take a look at these uh, three ordinances at your first meeting and, and uh, staff will prepare these and present, present these to you for your consideration and adoption in January. Is there a motion to approve Council Memo 573-20, which is a resolution entering into a memorandum of understanding with Coleman Joliet LLC? Mayor, just to be clear, it's to consider the adoption, correct? Yes, it is. And I know there were some issues with wording. Yeah, on, on um, where it says now, therefore, uh, number one, uh, it says it is the intention of the city and the, and the developer that the above referenced ordinances will be presented to the city council at the pre-council meeting scheduled for January 4th. So. It, so that goes along with what you were talking about yes, it's earlier an, in that uh, email. It's an assurance that, that staff will present it to you for your consideration. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve? Second. It's in motion and seconded to approve. Councilman Morris? Aye. Councilman Mudrin? Aye. Councilwoman Coleman? Aye. Councilwoman Reardon? Aye. Councilman Dickinson? Aye. Councilwoman Gavin? Aye. Councilman Hug? Aye. Motion carried. Next is Council Memo 574-20, a resolution approving an honorary street name change for Reverend James Hamilton Sr. on Parks Avenue between Clay Street and Jackson Street. It's recommended said resolution be adopted. Mayor, yes. I, believe, I believe the Reverend is here this evening. Yeah. You'd like to say something? I'm Geraldine williams Dorch, and I'm here to tell you about Reverend James Hamilton Sr. Reverend James Hamilton Sr. serves the committee, uh, community and served as pastor for 48 years on Clay, Parks and Clay Avenue one of the, one, as one of the oldest living pastors in the city of Joliet. Pastor James Hamilton Sr. Has, has ordained 25 pastors and apostles and preachers in his 48 years service. He's also served as a superintendent to our National Church for over 30 years. He also helped build Marge Hill Church of God in Christ before coming to St. James Community Church of God in Christ at its current location. Our church is open to everyone regardless of the race, religion, or class. He has taken in the homeless and performed funerals for the indigent. He also has sponsored youth sports camps. Personally, I can tell you that he will take your call at 3 a.m and come to the hospital right away. And, and all I had to say was, I need you. My husband had, a, had several strokes. He had supplied the uh, children in the community with Christmas and, uh, Christmas and back to school gifts for 35 years. He supplied Thanksgiving and Christmas meals for 50 uh, families every year. He also had uh, food and clothes drives then passed it on to the families in their time of need. This is why we recommend Reverend James Hampton Sr. to have an honorary street name. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> is there a motion to approve Council Memo 574-20, which is a resolution approving an honorary street name change for Reverend James Hamilton Sr. on Parks Avenue between Clay Street and Jackson Street? So moved. Been motion and seconded to approve. Councilman Mudrin? Aye. Councilwoman Coleman? Aye. Councilwoman Reardon? Aye. Councilman Dickinson? Aye. Councilwoman Gavin? Councilman Hug. Aye. Councilman Morris. Aye. Motion carried. Congratulations. Good evening, Mayor, City Council. 
Uh, I'd like to just say a couple words in regards to, uh, number one, thank you for your consideration and passing of the street naming of uh, Reverend Hamilton <coughs> Sr. Um, and I'd also like to uh, commend my sister, Jolene uh, Williams Dorch, uh, who also has been the first woman, ordained woman, to be named Elderess uh, in, in the history of this church. And she's been a member for a very long time. But even more importantly, the fact that uh, Reverend Hamilton Sr. is still here with us. And for him to, he doesn't even know about this right now, so for him to get this and, and to see uh, his legacy while he's still here, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next on the agenda is Council Memo 575-20, a resolution approving an honorary street name change for Terry Darcy on Essington Road between Friday Road and Old Castle Road. Mayor, yes. I also think some comments want to be made in that sure. regard as well. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. Uh, I'm Julia Alexander. Standing next to me is Ms. Frankie Green. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, clear up a misquote. The name changing idea did come from Ms. Frankie Green and the late Margie Gavin Woods. It was their idea that they discussed back in 2019 of November. And uh, she asked me to come aboard to assist her after I had uh, done Margie Woods' street name. Frankie asked me to come aboard to assist her in the street name for Mr. DRC, and I was more than happy to do that. And so um, I don't know uh, where the source comes from, but I can assure you that uh, Mr. DRC's family, nor did Mr. DRC know anything about it until next week. We were also trying to do a surprise street name. <laughs> and so we wanted to make that very clear. But however, uh, as I said, we're standing here before you in hopes that you will give a yes vote on an honorary street for Mr. Terry DeOrsi. This is but a small portion to give to a man who has given so much to the city, the county, and frankly, the world. Uh, I won't reiterate the patriotism acts that he's done. You just heard it, well, you didn't hear it coming from uh, the Land Use Committee, but most of you know the patriotism patriotic acts that Terry has performed for many, many years, not, I mean, for everyone. And so Mr. DeOrsi, to in my opinion, is a spiritual man who serves with patience, humbleness, and humility in an extraordinary way. It's no wonder he received the J.D. Ross Extraordinary Community Service Award. My favorite humane act Mr. Tory, uh, Mr. DRC displayed was when Joliet's longtime tradition of its annual fireworks were being threatened for lack of funding. Terry, along with the fire department and the police, went door to door to raise funds to assure the Joliet citizens that this would remain intact. Now, I wish this had been my idea, however, it wasn't. But I, as I stated, I was more than happy to assist in that. And with that being said, I'm going to bring you Mr. Terry DeOrsi. But before then, in the words, uh, if I may echo the words of my councilman, Councilman Terry Morris, during the street naming for Ms. Margie Woods, quote, this should have been done a long time ago, unquote. So, Frankie, would you have to say something? Good evening to the mayor, city council. Thank you so much for considering naming the street after Mr. Terry Darcy. Marge is smiling down and I know she is. So thank you so much. And I would also like to add, I'd like to thank uh, Ms. Kathleen Sperling for giving us all the wonderful information uh, on Terry Dorsey and all those wonderful people that signed 20, 40 pages of petitions. So without further ado, we're gonna bring the Dorsey family up to have a word.
Julie and Frankie, thank you. Um, good evening, Mayor and Council Members. It's not too late for no vote. We don't have to do this. <laughs> I came here to speech, so I'm, I'm glad that Reverend Hamilton is still with us because I thought these were you know, the people that I heard past. <laughs> I'm not sure if somebody knows some, I don't know, but anyway. Um, you know, I was at, at the dedication of the street for Margie this summer. And to think that I'm gonna have the same place in the community she had, that, that's pretty humbling. Uh, I learned from people like Margie to be selfless. And this community has that tone about it. Everybody in this community is giving and helpful and selfless. And I've learned that from, from you all. You all serve the community well. I mean, you're not always gonna make everybody happy, but you do your job well. So I've learned so much from this community. I'm gonna tell you a quick story, then I'll get out of here. I worked at a Chevrolet store in Naperville from 86 to about 91. And um, I had an opportunity to buy a Pontiac dealership with a, the, the owner's brother in St. Charles, Illinois. So we went to the closing and we were sitting at the table in the lawyer's office and um, 15 minutes late, the owner calls up and says, uh, Pontiac just decided they're gonna give this franchise to someone that has worked for them for 20 years and we're gonna exercise our first right of refusal. Pretty disappointing. But as one door closes, another door opens. So in the middle of 1991, the Graham family was selling the Oldsmobile store. I came down, looked at it, it was at the corner of Stryker and Jefferson. The, the parking lot had more weeds in it than most bean fields. <laughs> they had a barbed wire fence going around the whole place. And um, I decided I didn't really have a lot of money, so I had a lot of ambition and effort. And their big thing was they wanted me to rent the building for 10 years because they had a mortgage on it. So, so uh, luckily I was able to afford that and get into it. But what I found was this community was such a great partner to this community made me who I am, so and I thank God every morning for the blessings that they that, that have been given to us. And I really do enjoy reinvesting in our community. You know, the only two things I ever want to be known for is festivals and fireworks. All the other stuff I kind of try and do under the radar. But th this town's got a lot of heart, and I brag about it wherever I am. And I thank you all for this consideration. I thank Frankie. And I thank Julia. And, and I want to mention one more real special thing. Tonight is Frankie's birthday. So happy oh, birthday. Yeah. Oh. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve Council Memo 575-20, which is a resolution approving an honorary street name change for Terry Darcy on Essington Road between Friday Road and Old Castle Road? Second. Been motioned and seconded to approve. Councilwoman Pullman. Aye. Councilwoman Reardon. Aye. Councilman Dickinson. Aye. Councilwoman Gavin. Terry, I just want to say uh, to you that when your reinvestment in this city lifts us all up. Yes. So yes. we appreciate that, uh, all that you do. And we appreciate your wife for sharing you with <laughs> this city, for sure. So on that, I vote yes. Councilman Hug. Aye. Councilman Morris. Aye. Councilman Mudrin. Did you find for that, no? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Motion carried. Some mornings, I don't know if I could do what I did, so thanks. Yes, Next on the agenda is Council Memo 576 20, which is a resolution accepting Illinois Environmental Protection Agency Low Interest Loan L175744 for the Lead Water Service Line Replacement Program Phase 2. It's recommended said resolution be adopted. So moved. Second. Uh, Mayor, yeah, just to be clear on this item, it's called a, a loan, but once the contract is fulfilled over the next year, the uh, principal is forgiven, it turns into a right. Okay. This motion and seconded to approve. Councilwoman Reardon? Aye. Councilman Dickinson? Aye. Councilwoman Gavin? Aye. Councilman Hug? Aye. Councilman Morris? Aye. Councilman Mudrin? Aye. Councilwoman Quillman? Aye. Motion carried.
Next is Council Memo 577-20, which is a resolution approving an agreement with the Illinois Department of Transportation for phase one of the Theodore Street over the Rock Run Creek Improvement Project in the amount of $185,000. It's recommended said resolution be adopted. So moved. It's been motion and seconded to approve. Councilman Dickinson. Aye. Councilwoman Gavin. Aye. Councilman Hugg. Aye. Councilman Morris. Aye. Councilman Mudrin. Aye. Councilwoman Coleman. Aye. Councilwoman Reardon. Aye. Motion carried. Council memo 578-20 is a resolution appropriating funds for the phase one engineering for the Theodore Street over the Rock Run Creek Improvement Project in the amount of $185,000. It's recommended said resolution be adopted. So moved. Second. It's been motioned and seconded to approve. Councilwoman Gavin. Aye. Councilman Hugg. Aye. Councilman Morris. Aye. Councilman Mudrin. Aye. Councilwoman Coleman. Aye. Councilwoman Reardon. Aye. Councilman Dickinson. Aye. Motion carried. Council Memo 579-20, Resolution Authorizing Execution of a Development Agreement with Bayes Premier Building, LLC. It's recommended said resolution be adopted. So moved. Second. It's been motioned and seconded to approve. Councilman Hugg. Aye. Councilman Morris. Aye. Councilman Mudrin. Aye. Councilwoman Coleman. Aye. Councilwoman Reardon. Aye. Councilman Dickinson. Aye. Councilwoman Gavin. Aye, and Mr. Bays, let me also say to you that your reinvestment in the, this, this city, it lifts us all up as well. So thank you so much for, for your work in the city and reinvesting in the city. Aye. Motion carried. Council Memo 580-20, a resolution approving and authorizing execution of a settlement agreement between the City of Joliet and Martin J. Shanahan, Jr. Mayor? Yes. Uh, just for the record, uh, the amount of this agreement is uh, Mr. Shanahan's former uh, salary as uh, corporate counsel minus the amount of money he has already received in unemployment and then it provides a release of claims to the city uh, uh, from now on into the future. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. It's been motioned and seconded to approve Council Memo 580-20, which is a resolution approving and authorizing execution of a settlement agreement between the City of Joliet and Martin J. Shanahan, Jr. Councilman Morris? Aye. Councilman Mudrin? No. Councilwoman Coleman? Aye. Councilwoman Reardon? No. Councilman Dickinson? No. Councilwoman Gavin? No. Mayor, I'd like to move to table. It's, and you can table any time. No second? Second. It's been well, listen, can't talk about it. I don't know what the purpose is. We had five votes in executive session. Somebody changed the vote, and I'd like an explanation. Let's well, call the order. 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 Yeah, there, there is a motion and second to table, and, and she is correct. You can table at any time. Um, do you have a specific date for tabling? Indefinitely. It's been motion and seconded to table Council Memo 580-20 indefinitely. Councilman Mudrin? No. Councilwoman Coleman? Aye. Councilwoman Reardon? No. Councilman Dickinson? No. Councilwoman Gavin? No. Councilman Hugg? No. Councilman Morris? Aye. 
The motion failed. Two ayes and five noes. Vote. So moving back to the vote, let me just verify, Councilman, Councilwoman Gavin was a no, so Councilman Hug. I'm the last one, correct? Where, where, where are, the, are we at right now? I should be the fifth vote yes, according to our executive session. Okay, at this time. Yeah, at this point, what do we have? Two ayes, four noes. Of course, I'm going to go aye, but I really want an explanation, Councilman Dickinson. You were one of the yeses in the executive session. Why did you even one have Jim, Jim, Jim Hock bring this forward? I don't feel one any of order. Excuse me, go ahead. Go ahead, Dan. I don't feel I need to give an explanation. I, you know, when we were talking, it was for, it was for city manager and not corporation council. I'm sorry, what do you mean? It was never about that. It was about his firing. Jim Hopp presented about his firing. The last position he had, he hasn't been a city manager since June 5 destroyed him in June of uh, 2019. It was, were you asleep? It was always about where, where he got fired from, which was Corporation Council. Do you want to pull the tapes out? Can I get a fifth vote on the tapes this time? No, I'm good. Sorry, Jim. Well, let me say one thing. <clears throat> Because yeah, I, I think the Herald News did what they could to try to spin this, but I don't think it's very effective. The people who voted no to this aren't being fiscally responsible. It's just the opposite. We're going to get sued. This is an opportunity to avoid a lawsuit for an um, a wrongful termination. Um, but instead, we're going to rack up higher legal fees now and probably pay Mr. Shanahan more money. So <clears throat> don't, don't be fooled, anybody, that, that the no votes are looking out for the taxpayers of Joliet because you're not. But he's got to win the case first, right? <clears throat> sure. Are you going to flip the legal bill, Betty? And, and, and when the depositions come out, the things that you said about him in executive session will come out. Oh, absolutely. Okay. I can say them again right here. I Go have ahead. no problem. Go ahead. Make a record for the lawsuit. I have no problem with okay. the people anything you have the that floor. I said. So he's got to win the case. Go ahead, Betty. Get the floor. I have said all I'm going to say. <clears throat> I guess you got a problem with all they have to no do is call here. the uh, yes, uh, and subpoena the, 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 the night that we had the executive session with, with Steve Jones. Yeah. That's all they got to do. Right. Because and we knew that. Intelligent people knew that this is a losing cause for us. We just would have cut our losses. Yes. Let the record show that Council Memo 580-20 failed 3-4. to four. Yes, Mr. Mayor, can I just say something on this? Just yes. for you. Now, I'm not going to be long. I'm not going to beat no dead horse. But we need to get beyond this. It's politics at its worst. A couple of weeks ago it was one way. Look, Marty got caught up in the middle of something. You know, no one other than Steve Jones that I know of ever said anything to me about Marty doing a terrible job as a city attorney. Let this man move on. Let us move on. Give the man this package or whatever it is, whatever you want to call it, and move on. Everybody, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't understand the, 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 the back and forth, and, and you know, because, you know, Marty was the mayor's puppet, or Marty was this, or Marty was that. The man did an excellent job, and, and I know you all said that when he was city manager on two occasions, and we, 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 he fired him from that, then he should have just fired him out the door right then and there. He should have never went back to city attorney. That's all I got to say. I got more to say, but that's all I'm going to say before I say something that I shouldn't say. Well, uh, let me follow up, because you brought me into it, Terry. You know, Mar Marty was the mayor's puppet. Marty was hired by Mayor Girardi. And Jim, you were the city manager, I believe, at the time he was hired. If not, you worked with him for several years. So I hired Marty. Okay, there you go. <laughs> so Was he your puppet? Is that why he was fired? I, I, yeah, the politics. Marty brought forward a list of issues that were going on with the police department. He told this council that there were problems and needed to be addressed. Not one person on this city council, surprisingly, in executive session spoke up and said a word. When Marty started acting on what he told us he was going to do, that's when the Mudrin Five formulated um, and, and came put on the agenda to fire him. So 
it was a year and a half ago. I don't know how anyone can argue at this point that he was wrong in hindsight with what he was warning the council about. And Councilman Dickinson, Larry's right. You did say in executive session that you approved this. Mr. Hawk acted upon that. So the votes were there. We're not idiots. We didn't put this on the agenda to fail. But once again, one thing is said in private and then another thing is said publicly. Betty, that's why I, I challenge you about your comments. You know, Larry, the votes aren't there to release these tapes, but it, it will be. In short order, the votes are going to be there. And then enough of the garbage, the truth's going to come out about all this. Again, so, go ahead, Krista. Next is Council Memo 581-20, and that was previously removed from the agenda. So moving to Council Memo 582-20, it's a resolution authorizing execution of an economic incentive agreement with Darcy Motors Incorporated. It's recommended Council Memo 582-20 be approved. So moved. Second. It's been motioned and seconded to approve. Councilwoman Coleman? Aye. Councilwoman Reardon? Aye. Councilman Dickinson? Aye. Councilwoman Gavin? Aye. Councilman Hug? Aye. Councilman Morris? Aye. Councilman Mudrin? Aye. Motion carried. Under award of contracts, Council Memo 585-20, renewal of the Portable Radios Maintenance Agreement with Motorola in the amount of $28,051.92. Council Memo 586-20, award of professional services agreement for the Phase 1 Engineering Services for the Theodore Street over the Rock Run Creek Improvement Project to Siorba Group in an amount not to exceed $184,724.87. Council Memo 587-20, approved repairs to the Well 29D pump to Water Well Solutions Incorporated in the amount of $31,300. Council Memo 588-20, Award of Contract for Granicus Services. It's recommended Council Memos 585-20 through 588-20 be approved. So moved. Second. In motion and seconded to approve. Councilwoman Reardon. Aye. Councilman Dickinson. Aye. Councilwoman Gavin. Aye. Councilman Hogg. Aye. Councilman Morris. Aye. Councilman Mudrin. Aye. Councilwoman Coleman. Aye. Motion carried. Amend amendments, change orders, and payments. Council Memo 590 20, change order number one and change order number two for the bulk water dispensing station project to Lindblad Construction in the amount of $15,267.90 and two in the amount of $3,530. Council Memo 591-20, Amendment Number 1 to the Professional Services Agreement for the Alternative Water Source Program Financial Planning Rate Services Project to Burns and McDonald in the amount of $20,500. Council Memo 592-20, Change Order Number 1 for the Legacy Point Units 2 and 3 Public Improvements Project 2020 in the amount of $12,592.91 and payment request number two and final in the amount of $95,247.76 to P.T. Farrell Construction Company. Council Memo 593-20, change order number one for the 2019-2020 Large Meter Replacement Program to Calumet City Plumbing and Heating Company in the amount of $77,813. Council Memo 594-20, Payment for hazardous tree removals and debris removal due to the storm of August 10th, 2020 to D. Ryan Tree and Landscape Services in the amount of $79,737. Council Memo 595-20. Payment for the emergency insertion valve and valve replacement at Hobolt Road and West Jefferson Street to Superior Excavating in the amount of $32,546. Council Memo 596-20, change order number seven for the Rock Run and West Park Interceptor Rehabilitation Project to this use sewer in the amount of $29,227.01. And Council Memo 597-20, 
change order number two for the 2020 <coughs> sanitary sewer rehabilitation program to performance pipelining incorporated in the amount of negative fifteen thousand one hundred fifty two dollars and thirty five cents it's recommended council memos 590-20 through 597-20 be approved so moved second been motion and seconded to approve. Councilman Dickinson? Aye. Councilwoman Gavin? Aye. Councilman Hogg? Aye. Councilman Morris? Aye. Councilman Mudrin? Aye. Councilwoman Coleman? Aye. Councilwoman Reardon? Aye. Motion carried. Next is the city manager's report. I have no report this evening. New business not for final action or recommendation. Nothing. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I'm really, this is not rhetorical, folks. Anybody wants an answer, please. What five of you have put Marty and his family through is evil and unforgivable. What Jim Hawk came up with on a one-year settlement is really only twice as much as a standard severance package in any uh, city or company, which is normally six months, because he's very well aware that it's a case we're going to lose, so we're going to save some money. This is a very personal, vindictive vendetta you guys got against this man. Can you explain why? Can you explain your evilness? I got my answer. Thank you, Mayor. Jim. I agree with what you said 100%. I was going to say a few words, but I decided to keep quiet because I'm just don't want to say something that I will regret later. Yeah. Nothing. Okay. Okay. No. Baby? Yes. Uh, I'd like to, or uh, new business, uh, to get the council to talk about and look into a plan for the recreational cannabis tax money. I believe that <clears throat> the public is asking uh, and very concerned about it. I think that the council should really look into this plan list uh, and uh, allocate those dollars and come up with a plan first. So let's have that conversation. And then build a funding plan. I don't know what committees will be uh, uh, in this or uh, responsible. I know finance will probably be there, and as well as as legislative. And but uh, and certainly diversity wants to be uh, a part of that as well. So we need to start that conversation about how those cannabis tax dollars will be uh, planned and distributed. On that note, yes. Well, Betty, I thought, and Jim, somebody helped me out, that this, some conversation had already started. I came to the diversity meeting, yes. and I know uh, Mr. Mays and Erica had came up. So the staff was supposed to go back, wasn't they? Was, wasn't the community asking, you know, staff to come up with a plan? I don't know if Mr. Jackson or who from the, from the staff. It, it, this was discussed when we voted on it months ago this wasn't just at that last diversity meeting no. that we needed some type of plan exactly so this thing just when you wasn't here then yeah marty i don't know anyway y'all know how i am this is so upsetting i anyway we could be home watching football game. so mayor. what what are we doing or what have we been doing mayor yes uh i, I was kind of new to the issue and so the uh legislative committee was the first I learned about it but uh, <clears throat> I did ask neighborhood services uh, for some uh, census track information regarding uh, how to which I think would be a foundation to uh, determine what are underserved populations here in the community so I was going to pro provide that uh, data to uh, Betty and her legislative committee Diversity. Diversity. Diversity, I'm sorry. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Diversity. Yeah, we, yeah. Jim, we would like that. I, we knew that uh, districts four and five uh, were those uh, targeted districts. So I believe what the, what the community is waiting for uh, or ask me about was a plan. What does the city has planned? But... It can be a very <clears throat> inclusive conversation back at the diversity uh, committee level mm -hmm. to start that. So yeah. let's get it done. 
Yeah. And then also, do we know how much? Yeah. I mean, what are you going to call it? Revenue? The revenue? Yeah, the revenue. Uh, about. I'll, I'll follow up on that as well. Okay. Jim, uh, one more thing. I know that, I don't know if we get it, but I know the county gets a month by month uh, amount of their allocation. And I'm wondering if the city gets that as well. Yeah, there are, the state distributes all uh, tax revenue on a monthly okay. basis to cities and counties. Okay, so we should be able to grab that, mm -hmm. those numbers, okay. That's all I have, Mayor. Okay. Now, I'm, I'm sorry, I probably should have said this one, but, but my mind was somewhere. Can you also follow up with either Kendall or Chris on the, um, which would be the land use legislative committee we were supposed to be talking about to reform? People are ready to come and, and, and meet, uh, meet about that. The police reform. Oh, just the one okay. that was legislative. I think it was, and I don't know which, how it's going to go, where it's going to go, but we're going to try to talk about it, discuss it, and move move on, one, and, and hopefully in a good, positive way. Very good. So we're ready this November to meet and before Christmas. Okay. And along those lines, there has been talk, and, and Councilman Morris, I know you've been pushing this, Again, not just in the last couple of months, but for some time, on a citizens review board. And I think uh, Mr. Regis was going to show us different proposals, Jim, if that's correct. Okay. If you could have be prepared or, or have someone be prepared to present that to the committee about the different options that we would have with that. Very good. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Next is public comments. Is there anyone that would like to speak under public comments this evening? Mayor Council. Good evening. I'm Garland Mays from the Forest Park neighborhood. Um, I'm glad that we, uh, I know that you, yesterday I emailed everyone last night about my uh, proposal and uh, for the marijuana tax dollars and I'm glad we're having this discussion. Um, and so I look forward to having further discussions as we move further down the line because that question has been asked of me and so I wanted to forward those questions on to the mayor and to this council and to the city manager. So I do appreciate you looking into this um, and, and as we move forward I hope that we can make some, some good progress on this. I really do. I think some great things can come out of this especially for District 4 and 5 and uh, I look forward to uh, having those conversations, most definitely. The last thing I want to say, being a resident of the city of Joliet, I know we get caught up in the patch, the Herald News and everything going on. And, and, you know, just seeing what's going on tonight, I'm not playing either side of the fence or anything. But as a resident of the city of Joliet, and I know I've talked to some of you, I, I call to see our leaders like this is hurtful. To see this being done in front of a public camera like this is hurtful. You, you're hurting the residents. You gotta have this talk behind the closed doors. Mayor, this mayor, please. I, I, we mayor, you know we can always point. talk. I, this is how I feel. I'm, I'm passionate, just like you're passionate about this city, just like Janet. Just like Larry, everyone has a passion. Yeah, I don't know. And, 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 and let, let me say something. We did, we, we talked about an executive session. We took a straw poll and people said one thing. Mayor, this is just, Mayor, I, with all problem. due respect, with all due respect, Mayor, this is just not about today. This is not about just today. This has just been, this has been going on for so long with everything that's going on. Everything that's going on, Mayor. And I think if you talk to Mr. Hawk privately, He'll tell you his frustrations with how things are said privately and then what's presented publicly. Well, I can tell you how. It's been an ongoing problem. I, I, can, I can tell you publicly and privately how frustrated the residents are yeah. in the city of Joliet. Me too. I'm right because there there's, it's just, we have to, it has to be done better. It just has to be done better. City of Champions, it just has to be done better. That's all I got to say, and you probably won't hear from me till next year. So. Thank you. Have a good New Year. Is there anyone else who would like to speak under public comments? 
<coughs> Next is Mayor and Council comments. Yeah, I have something, Mayor. Thank you. Over the last six months, I've been put in a position that has been very uncomfortable for me with my role on the council. This has affected all the decisions that I need to make to help the city of Joliet move forward. I feel I've, I have been harassed, badgered, tormented, and now blackmailed unfairly. This is over a personal relationship that I had a few years ago with another consenting adult. Photos were sent between us, for us, and for us only. This issue is being held over my head. The entire matter is being investigated by the Joliet Police Department. I have always been here for my constituents in the city, and I will be in the future. Thank you for your support in the past and your understanding of my personal matter. Thank you. Mary, I just wanted to acknowledge that we made the right decision. You know, the community is too to allow parents to decide for themselves. Um, Halloween, it was great seeing the kids come out, you know, and, uh, and they needed it. After all these children have been through since last March, they needed it. So I uh, congratulate this council on letting the parents decide. I had a little over 60 kids coming out. Okay. What can I say? Um, it's I too am disappointed. Uh, we did come to an agreement. I thought finally this council's coming together. And again, tonight was a blind side. So we do try to come together. And as the mayor said, it's one thing to said in the closed session where we look like we're gonna move forward and start over. And the next thing you know, we're blindsided. I just have to say as a, as a citizen, as a council person, I have never seen it like this ever. And I'm very disappointed. And right now, I, I don't know what to say, except I don't know that we'll ever come together. I hope that we do, but I don't know where the truth is going to come because you believe people and then they, in the end, they lie to you. So that's all I have to say. Yep. Uh, I guess I'm back on the COVID-19. Uh, our numbers, I know all of us are trying, but our numbers aren't working. Uh, they're going back up. More restrictions, I'm sure, are going to be on us soon. Everybody, please try as hard as you can. Uh, help uh, your neighbors, friends, family. Uh, we have uh, a lot of issues going with that, and hopefully we can get it turned around and get them to come back down. That's it. Thank you. Sir? Yeah, you know what? <laughs> I'd just like to say this to, to my fellow council. I don't have a problem one way or the other if Marty get it or he don't get it. Marty's going to be okay one way or the other. But I just feel bad that we approached by Mr. Hart to say this is what I'm looking to do and nobody among us say anything questions or anything like, like everything is fine. We didn't even have to be here tonight with that on this thing. It didn't even have to be here. It's like we, it's a, a clown show or something. Why would we bring this forward and you know, and I'm gonna say you, whoever, you know, whatever, don't wanna do it. It's just not right. It's not right, as far as I'm concerned, for me. Because all you have to say, hey, Mr. Hawk, we're not comfortable with that. And, it go, and it's gone, it's done. And it, there would be no reason to bring that. And I just think that we need to do better, and probably not going to do better, but I'm going to say, I just think we need to do better with that. And that's why we talked about it, and I thought, <laughs> and I know what I heard, and didn't hear. It, you know, it's just a big I'm done with the Sure. No, thank you. Betty? A couple things. Um, number one, Councilman Hug, I, I'm going to echo your comments about Halloween. <laughs> Uh, from what I could tell, it went over very well in Joliet. It was good to see some normalcy. So thank you to everyone who participated and to the parents who were responsible with the children. Um, number two, we, uh, your economic development committee, you're going to be asked to meet in November. I met with Mr. Hawk and Derek with, with the developer, an exciting project that's going to come forward. It's going to be on the fast track, so hopefully in the next few weeks, there'll be another meeting for your committee. We can bring this forward. We're hoping first meeting in December. And then finally, um, we're going to make a formal announcement about the Light Up the Holidays Parade. Um, I think it's pretty clear at this point it would not be responsible or safe to pack thousands of people in a few blocks in downtown Joliet, even outside. So we're going to make some adjustments. But I have been working with staff and Councilwoman Quillman. 
We um, work at some of these, it'll be a lot of fun, a little bit different, but uh, mindful for the children of our community. And hopefully in the next week or so, we can make some announcements, announcements on that. <clears throat> and that's all I have today. Thank you, Kristen. Is there a motion to adjourn? Second. <coughs> okay. Motion seconded to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Aye.